This is the final part of The Godfather of Modern Transgenderism. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Kids are being led to believe and parents are being led to believe that you can step in with these very powerful medications, these hormones, and you can deny biology and you can pause biology. You can create a persona of the opposite sex without paying a huge price. That is the lie that's being told, that you're not going to pay a price for this. Oh yeah, there might be a few side effects. No, 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 no. This book in 1998 is much more radical than John Money. This, at least John Money said, well, you know, you're either male or female, and that you need, and that that's fixed by the age of three. Okay, by 1998, kids were being told, no, 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 that's, a, that's an oppressive false binary. It's all on a spectrum. It's all fluid. Um, and, and it's fluid for your entire life. And uh, it's wonderful to explore and to question. And no one can tell you who you are. And just a million different ways. It's, it's so much more radical. I mean, I wish almost, you know, that we were back with John Money's theory because it would be so easy to, um, you know, defeat, to, to, it's so easy now. We have so much information from hard science. In fact, if John Money were living today, he could never, he, he, he could never get published with such a theory that he had about gender and biology. I, I mean, it, 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 it's ridiculous. We have too much information about the impact of the chromosomes, uh, prenatally and, uh, you know, the, 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 the impact of hormones. So we, we know now that men and male and female, you know, it's not only different genitalia, uh, it, not only what John Money pointed out, you know, lactating and menstruating, we have each cell in our, in our, in our bodies, except for cells that don't have a nucleus, which are very few, but every cell that has a nucleus is stamped male or female, and it makes a difference. Right. Okay, so there's a mm -hmm. female heart. You know, the, 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 we know now in cardiology that when it comes to, for example, arrhythmias, there's a difference in the type of arrhythmias that a woman might get at a po as opposed to a man. There's a difference in the way that a woman who sustains uh, a, very, a very difficult burn, her, how her body might react to it as opposed to a man. And this is true for every system. Right. Well, the thing is, kids are being led to believe and parents are being led to believe that you can step in with these very powerful medications, these hormones, and you can yep. deny biology, and you can pause biology. You can create a persona of the opposite sex without paying a huge price. That is the lie that's being told, mm. that you're not gonna pay a price for this. Oh yeah, there might be a few side effects. Yep. So this is what parents don't know, <laughs> that they must understand. And they have to understand this before their kid comes home and says, mom, I'm not your daughter, I'm your son. They need to know this way before that happens. First of all, let's look at the numbers just in the past five years, 10 years of this explosive growth of uh, individuals who are coming in for treatment for gender dysphoria. So there is a hysteria that we're in the midst of. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a wave, it's a tsunami. I hope that we're at the, the crest of the wave right now, but we could just be at the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. sim, you know, just 10 years ago, we had rates of, you know, one in, in 10 to 30 to 100,000 people w w w with, with this particular disorder. We didn't even have numbers. It was so rare let's say 20 years ago, it was so rare for a teenager to present as opposed to a little kid or an older person, and they were rare. But it was even more rare for an, for an adolescent to suddenly come out with this new identity and with gender dysphoria. So um, those people were so w rare just 10, 15 years ago, and now we have studies showing, you know, 10%, 20% of a high school class in an urban high school 
might identify as not being male or female. So I don't know where this is going. Right. Is, is it, you know, is it going to 40 percent? Um, that's why parents have to be aware of this. I would also say uh, in, in terms of fear monger, you know, the charge of fear mongering, and it's really only a minority of people who are going to suffer. Um, we have no data whatsoever to support that. No long term data whatsoever. The data that we do have shows us that the, the regret uh, over this, you know, massive life change and these surgeries might take eight to 10 years to develop. And, 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 and I would add that not only does it, does it take time to develop, it takes time to acknowledge it and to come out with it publicly. And the research that we do with those people yep. that regret it, they're not going back to the clinics and telling them. There's no one keeping the statistics on them. They're not coming back to their doctors. How, how did you do this to me? They can't sue. It's too late. I've paid a price. Oh, I've certainly paid a price. Uh, years ago, when I worked at UCLA, uh, my first book came out in 2008 called Unprotected. And I challenged the political correctness of what was going on in that student health clinic. Oh, I was, I paid a very heavy price. I was shunned. People who I thought were my friends stopped talking to me. After 11 years of very high, you know, positive uh, annual reviews of my work, suddenly after my book came out, I got a negative review. And eventually I had to leave. My parents were Holocaust survivors. And all of my grandparents and, and, and a, good pit, a good bit of both sides of the family were, uh, were exterminated, were, were, were victims of the Holocaust. So I understand tyranny and I understand lies. And I understand when, when dangerous people stand up and, and, and say falsehoods and they are followed out of, um, because out of fear and intimidation. I understand that too well. And I would say the other reason is that I'm a person of faith, deep faith, and I believe that there are, um, that there are eternal truths. And I believe that part of why I'm here in the world is to stand up in my, in my small way, when, it, when I can, to stand up for truth and to um, protect, especially young people and their families, from this terrible darkness of lies. We hope you liked this series. Please share and subscribe to our channel so we can continue bringing you interesting content that you enjoy.